Good morning, my name is Gemma Vila. I would like to start by thanking you all for being here. This research has helped to deepen into the knowledge of the transcriptional regulation of the human ev one gene in acute myeloid leukemia, which is one of the ongoing projects in Dr. Odero's laboratory. Cancer is an important disorder that affects heavily our society. Within the different types of tumors, acute myeloid leukemia comprises a biologically and clinically heterogeneous group of aggressive disorders that occur as a consequence of a wide variety of genetic and epigenetic alterations in hematopoietic stem cells. It is known scientifically that the overexpression of the oncogene EV1 is a poor prognostic marker in acute myeloid leukemia patients. However, there is very little knowledge on its transcriptional regulation. This is why our project consists in the optimization of the knockdown experiments of three transcription factors which are known to have putative binding sites in the promoter of this oncogene. These transcription factors are ETS2, CFOS and SP1. So our hypothesis is that ETS2, CFOS and SP1 could bind to the promoter of this oncogene, activating its transcription. Within the small group of mechanisms that are known to have an important role in the overexpression of this oncogene, we have two transcription factors that are known to have to bind in the promoter region of the gene, activating its transcription. These transcription factors are ELK and RUNX1. Moreover, a, a recent research has demonstrated that other transcription factors, such as ETS2, CFOS and SP1, also have putative binding sites in this promoter region. So this is where my, exper my experiment starts. Uh, these results were, were also confirmed with luciferases assays <coughs> by mutating some of the of the nucleotides in the, um, in the binding sites of the promoter region of EV1 and we, we, we saw that the activity of the luciferase decreased when these sites were mutated in the case of ETS2 and SP1. Uh, in the case of CFOS, AP, AP1 is, the complex, is a complex protein composed by uh, John and CFOS. We have seen that the expression does not decrease heavily. However, it is seen that these transcription factors uh, affects the expression of every one in C. elegans. So that's why we chose this transcription factor also. Now, once exposed our, uh, our hypothesis and objectives, it's time to move to the design and method section. I would like to say that the techniques which I will explain now are the ones which I've been able to learn and to practice in the laboratory. To start with, the experiment was performed using three acute myeloid leukemia cell lines, which are HEL, F36P and TF1. We tried different conditions and within them, one of them was uh, trying different cell numbers. The, the silencing of the three transcription factors was performed using SIRNAs <coughs> against, against the specific transcription factors. This transfection of the cells was performed during two consecutive days so as to achieve a more stable inhibition. We used Blockit as a control so as to assess non-specific uh, silencing effect. We also used different concentrations of these SIRNAs so as to improve our results each time. And we used different techniques, which are nucleofection and electroporation. We then uh, got our result from different times after the silencing and we performed mRNA analysis, uh, uh, evaluating the levels of the mRNA of the transcription factors and correlating them with the levels of every one. We did the same thing using Western blood so as to, so as to obtain uh, information about the protein levels. Now it's time to move on to the results. I would like to say also that the different graphs and images that, are show, that I will show to you now are just some of the results that we have obtained in our experiments. To start with, I'll start with the ETS2. As you can see here, uh, we have achieved to decrease the mRNA levels of the transcription factor with the siRNA, 
However, we cannot see differences in the protein level. So uh, we cannot say whether FE1 is related or not related with the ETS2 activity. In the case of CFOS, something similar happened. We have also achieved after 48 hours of the silencing a decrease in the mRNA levels. However, uh, in terms of the protein, we cannot see difference either. And finally, the best results obtained were in the case of SP1. We can see once again that we have been able to decrease the mRNA levels of this transcription factor. And what's more important is that the protein levels also decrease after the double silencing. And we've seen that when SP1 levels decrease, this leads to a down regulation of the oncogene every one. Something that surprised us was the fact that when we, when we were able to decrease the protein levels of, every, of SP1 in the different samples, we also see a decrease in the ETS2 protein levels. So that led us to think in a possible crosstalk between these two transcription factors. However, obviously, a future experiment are needed to be done so as to confirm these results. Now, uh, I'd like to explain our conclusions obtained. In the case of ETS2, uh, it is important to say that the knockdown experiment, unfortunately, we have not achieved it successfully. However, in the literature, there are authors that uh, affirm that ETS2 regulates genes involved in tumor genesis. <coughs> so possibly, if we, we are able to achieve a good knockout of these transcription factors, we could see a down regulation of everyone. In the case of CFOS, something similar happens. And once again, the knockdown experiment has not been achieved successfully. However, in the literature, CFOS regulates genes associated with oncogenesis, and within these genes, we have can find everyone. So, future experiment, I hope, could be able to solve our hypothesis. And finally, in the case of SP1, uh, we can say that possibly regulates everyone at the transcriptional level. And so we could now move on so, to a following step, so as to uh, perform future experiments so as to um, be able to describe better the role of this transcription factor in the transcriptional regulation of every <coughs> one. And this is the possible crosstalk which I've mentioned in our slide before between the two transcription factors, ETS2 and SP1. Uh, to what refers to the future experiments which I was commenting in the last slide, uh, I would like to say that it would be a good idea to future uh, to, in terms of uh, now, we could do a chromatin immunoprecipitation assays so as to confirm the binding of SP1 to the IV1 promoter. We could then move, off, move, move on to the overexpression of this transcription factor so as to uh, see the effect that this, that this one has in IV1 expression. We could also perform uh, mutagenesis analysis and luciferase assays to confirm the interaction between SP1 and the promoter of every one. We could then move on to perform immunoprecipitation assays so as to prove whether this transcription factor is a member or not of a protein complex. And finally, we could move on to the clinical area in which we could perform clinical assays so as to determine the correlation of SP1 and every one in protein samples of patients with acute myeloid leukemia. So, thank you. I would like to thank Dr. Rodero, Leire and Miren for their unfailing support during these two years. I would also like to thank them for their dedication and effort they have put into this project. And obviously the rest of my colleagues of the laboratory for giving me the opportunity to to experience the day-to-day -day life of a genetic laboratory. And finally, thank you all of you for listening to me and I would be happy to have now any questions you might have.